Good morning. It is time for the first federal program on this beautiful Friday morning. A little chillier than uh, I would prefer, but hey, still wonderful out there. Oh, okay. Now you say it's beautiful. It's pitch dark. How do you know it's beautiful? Because we're awake. <laughs> oh, okay. It's a mindset. Uh, it's a mindset. Uh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Well, lots of things are happening in our world, unfortunately, unfortunately. Uh, the virus has caused uh, universities to move classes to online as well as sporting events, concerts, and so forth to be canceled and rescheduled, so, uh, suspended or held without anyone in attendance. Yep. We're going to have a Tanner, we're going to have a uh, basketball game with nobody there. Pretty much. Okay, all right. Europe uh, to U.S. travels uh, uh, is banned in. Uh, for 30 days. Starting tonight? Tonight yeah. at midnight, I believe? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just know they said Friday. Friday, yeah. I think, I think it's midnight, so... Well, that's, this is Friday the oh, 13th, yeah. Yeah, you know. So be, yeah. be careful of black cats and don't walk in no under ladders, any ladders. No ladders, broken mirrors, anything like mm, that? No, okay. don't do that. All right. Okay, we got a little trivia this morning besides Alaska. Besides Alaska. What other state has never had a school represented in the NCAA tournament? Is it Delaware, New Hampshire, or Maine? Yeah, hey. I wrote, wrote that trivia when the tournament was still so, going on, okay. but since then the tournament has been canceled. So. Okay, Tanner Lee, welcome. Glad to have you here this morning. Yeah. What, what's what's happening, if anything? <laughs> well, a lot of cancellations, uh, postponing, suspending. Of events, but I will go over some events that have happened that, that are still going on. Uh, we have RHS Athletic Director Ryan Johnson here as our guest this morning. The uh, Rochester boys basketball team beat Rensselaer over the weekend, 60 to 52, in a really exciting double overtime game to win their uh, first sectional since 2009. Congratulations to them. They now will play uh, Blackford tomorrow at. Do you say that Lapel? Is that how? Yep, Lapel. Lapel. Okay. At Lapel High School, uh, Black, Blackford has uh, Luke Brown, guard Luke Brown Jr., leads the state in scoring. Uh, he has offers from Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Ball State, Indiana State, Kent State, Lehigh, and interest from a lot of other schools. So no, no Big Ten school yet. Not yet. Okay. Uh, there could be some interest maybe, but uh, he's a six-foot guard, really good scorer. So that'll be an exciting matchup to see the Zebras take them on. And what time is that game at, Ryan? Yeah, so uh, obviously this has been a very fluid situation over the last 24 hours. And so last night uh, what was decided is that um, our tip will be at 12.30 p.m. on Saturday at LaPel against Blackford. And basically the, the reasoning behind that is with uh, Governor Holcomb, um, you know, basically saying non-essential <laughs> gatherings, Cannot be over 250. Oh, no, wait a minute. In the state of Indiana, a basketball hey. game is essential. I would I would argue that point too. Yeah, I right. would argue that point too. <laughs> but uh, we want to make sure everyone's safe and you know healthy, and that's our number one concern. And and so with that, they're going to clear out the uh, gym after the first game, Wapahani and Rossville. Take about 10, 15 minutes to clean, and then uh, we'll, we'll roll the Rochester fans in and get and get going. So. Yeah, a little adjustment there to the schedule, um, and like I said, it's a, it's a very fluid situation. Um, it seems like everything in our uh, our society and our world is now very fluid, um, whether something's going to take place or whether something's going to get canceled. So we'll, we'll keep everyone informed as we get information. Uh, the word is flexible. Yes, flexible. exactly. You know, we got to stay flexible. The the one thing is there's there's some things you can control in life. There's some things you can't. So yeah. if you just try and control the controllables, you'll be all right. If you start worrying about the other ones. Not much you can do. We also had a few other local teams advance. Uh, Caston beat Pioneer 44 to 40 to win their sectional, and Argus beat Triton 28 to 26 to win their sectional. I believe that's now consecutive years back to back they've won sectional. Those two teams will meet up tomorrow at Triton, so either Caston or Argus is guaranteed to play in the regional final. It's pretty exciting stuff. Okay. Yeah, we got a few other notes here. A former Rochester runner Wesley Meyer. He's a senior at Olivet Nazarene. He won the NAIA national title in the mile and was second in the 3,000 meter and was named the NAIA Indoor Track and Field Men's Track National Athlete of the Year. So congratulations to Wesley. That's 
great wow. to see him uh, secede in post high school. Makes me tired just to read that. <laughs> and then I also had a note here, form, former Valley player, basketball player, Sophie Buzzard was uh, scheduled to play an NCAA tournament as her school, Southeast Missouri State, won the Ohio Valley Conference Tournament. Of course, the NCAA tournament for both men's and women's has been canceled, so that won't be played. But still, congratulations to her and her team for a great season. Uh, I had down here for conference tournament updates, but of course, with NCAAs being canceled, the conference tournaments were, were canceled as well. But IU did beat Nebraska 89-64 on Wednesday, and Notre Dame beat Boston College 80-58 to on Wednesday. So uh, those two teams did get one last game in this week, but just a strange time to be a sports fan. The only uh, big national, one of the big national sports leagues that is still going is NASCAR and IndyCar is still going to be racing, but without fans in attendance as of now. That could change. Uh, the PGA Tour, as of yesterday, was going to continue playing without fans. They played one round and then decided they canceled the next three tournaments leading up to the Masters. So a lot of, a lot of big sporting events getting canceled, and some that are uh, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see if they're going to be able to play them. So. It's a big economic blast to, Absolutely. Uh, to the uh, communities and, you know, the, the conferences and... Conferences and the NCAA tournament I read last year brought in, it was close to a billion dollars in revenue. I think it was in the 900 millions. Yeah. So, yeah, tough, tough calls made by all, really, but... Flexibility. Flexibility. You got any tidbits today? Oh, I always have some tidbits. I don't know how good they are, but I got some. Oh, uh, we'll judge that. <laughs> On this date, 1852, the Uncle Sam cartoon figure made its debut in the New York Lantern Weekly. When we were talking yesterday, Dick asked me when the last when's the last time I've seen a Uncle Sam cartoon or anything. I said it's, it's been a while. Yeah, I haven't seen one in. Uh, it seems like forever. You know, you, you, you it pops up every once in a while. Yeah. You don't realize it, but when you try to think back about it, it's not super memorable. Mm -hmm. My uh, recollection when I was younger during World War II, the posters were Uncle Sam pointing at you and saying, "Buy bonds." Buy bonds. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you took that advice, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Pay for the war. On this day, 1884, the U.S. adopted standard time. I thought that was kind of relevant since this, <laughs> we were just talking about daylight savings time last week. On this day, 1960, the NFL Chicago Cardinals moved to St. Louis. And then the St. Louis Cardinals would eventually move to Arizona. So the city of St. Louis has lost two NFL franchises in the Cardinals. And then later on, the Rams, when they moved to Los Angeles a couple of years ago. But they have an XFL franchise. So, so what does that say for St. Louis? They're not treating them very I well? I guess they're just not a good town to have a football team. Well, they probably don't have the population to carry it. Good or, the, or a good facility. They're, they're dome. Taxpayers don't necessarily want to pay for the, the billion-dollar yeah. stadium. Yeah, because their, do their dome is a... I went there one time in 2014, I think it was, and it wasn't... Wasn't very good. So uh, today is National Jewel Day. It's also World Sleep Day. Blame someone else day. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Uh, coconut Tort Day. And I thought this one was fitting since it's Friday the thirteenth. Open an umbrella indoors day. On Friday the thirteenth. Yeah, that's I kind of that's kind of walking the line. Isn't I it? wouldn't recommend. <laughs> I'm just curious where you find this stuff. Hey, there's a website I get this information <laughs> yeah. from. So we secret. have to leave everything on the internet. Yeah, it's secret. <laughs> some things. <laughs> well, some upcoming events. The Fulton County uh, Ch Chamber of Commerce is sponsoring a public open house Thursday, next Thursday, uh, at the new Smith Sawyer and Smith office space uh, on the uh, it's the old bank building at Eighth and. Mon and Maine, uh, 4.30 to 6.30. The last legislative breakfast uh, for 2020 will be held next Saturday, March 21st at 7.30 at the Akron Community Building. Fulton County Economic uh, Corporation invites anyone interested in helping the agricultural community grow stronger to a breakfast at Giretti's at 7 o'clock on Thursday, March 19th. That's next Thursday. Rochester Youth Baseball is looking for sponsors. Uh, commitments 
by uh, March 27th. Opening day is April 2014. Sponsors provide shirts and hats for each player and a uh, banner in the outfield. Antique show starts today out at uh, Fulton County Historical Society. I think it runs a couple of days. Uh, they moved that from the uh, used to be at the fairground. So uh, <clears throat> we're going to have a bark park. Yeah, that's one of the. Uh, Ryan and I are both in a Fulton County Leadership Academy, and that's one of the groups in our class. That's their project, and so they they really make some headway there. Bark Park. Bark Park. It's gonna be a dog park. No good. Yep. <laughs> okay. Okay. The annual St. Patrick's Ham Loaf and Salad Bar is this Thursday at the Presbyterian Church. <clears throat> Uh, kind of on a personal note, uh, under milestone, my little brother Mickey passed away yesterday. Uh, he'd been fighting some illnesses for several weeks, and uh, our condolences to his family. The uh, local, uh, uh, the some uh, flowers today. Fulton County United Way for raising ninety-seven thousand uh, dollars, a few thousand dollars more than last year. Also, I got to talk a little bit about First Federal. We got the award for the largest per capita donation. Our people really get behind that and really promote it a lot. Okay, and uh, money news. Dow I have here. Not good. Bad. <laughs> Not good. Uh, closed down 10% yesterday to 21200 uh, And... Uh, it's something else. You, 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 I noticed the futures this morning are up a little bit, but uh, we'll see what happens. Interest rates this week have been pretty flat. Come in and see us today and see, uh, and, we'll, and we'll, we're open from 5 p.m. and tomorrow from uh, 8.30 to noon. Tell us about our special that we're having, Tanner. Are you talking about our Simply Free Checking? Yes. Yeah, right now, if you come in and open it up a Simply Free Checking account or a Simply Free Business Checking account, or you can refer a friend, and that way you both get a gift, you get a free gift, and it's in, right now you'll get an Ironworks 142-piece tool set. 142 pieces? 142 pieces. Did I counted them yesterday. Did you? Yep. Okay. So did you count one box or did you count all the... Uh, just one box. Oh, okay. Just the box I had, so... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so right now, if like I said, if you're you're wanting to make a switch or don't have a checking account, and want to open a checking account, fifty dollar deposit and then <clears throat> free from there. Well, on. and if you got an issue with your car or vehicle, well, you can fix it yourself, right? And Some I gotta, people. I got to say, the customer service there is excellent. I got a bank account at First Federal last Saturday morning. Yeah. And treated me like family. Oh my God. Yeah. What? <clears throat> Thank you. We appreciate that. Hey, I'm glad to be a part of it. Okay, we offer many different mortgage products, USDA, FHA, conventional loans, one-step construction loans, premier first-time homebuyer loans, and more. Our loan originators, Ben Dalton, John Schaefer, and Stacy Wilson here in Rochester provide you with more details. We offer the Simply Free checking account uh, that we just talked about and with 142 pieces. Yep, come in and get 142 okay. pieces tool set. We also offer financial services. Contact Mark Bubar or Brian Bell today for more information. Like us on Facebook and what else? Yes, yeah, so you can like our Facebook page. We can uh, You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Our handle is at FFBanking. And you can also uh, follow us on LinkedIn and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So we're all over the place. Okay. We're the only locally owned bank in Fulton County. We don't want to be the biggest, just the best bank. The borrowers must meet underwriting guidelines. We are members of FDIC and an equal housing lender, and our NMLS number is 3999 or 27. We're legal and ready to go. Okay, yeah. We, one of the <laughs> wonderful regulations that we have in our business. Okay, our guests this morning, we're really happy to have with us Ryan Johnson, who's the uh, new athletic director at Rochester Community Schools. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you. You're a 
one of the few people that's happy to see me the last 24, 36 <laughs> hours with all the information I've been putting out. It hasn't been very uh, positive. <laughs> well, it is what it is. Exactly. Yeah. Control what you can control. Okay, now, uh, I understand out on the street that you're taking credit for the uh, sectional win last week. and uh, with Oh, double, yeah, it was all me. You know, double. Same with the girls and the sectional and the volleyball. Yep, it's, you know, I'm... I'm I must have the Midas touch, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Let's. Uh, you just mentioned uh, the three sports there that mm -hmm. you've done very well. Mm -hmm. Elaborate on that a little bit. Well, and it's not just our team sports. Um, we've had a very, very successful fall and winter season. Looking forward to a spring season um, and having a lot of success there too. But uh, in the fall, um, both our boys and girls cross country teams qualified for regional. The girls went all the way to semi state in the Madeline, uh, Callaway, and Mallory Hyatt both qualified for state, and uh, I think placed in about the top 30, top 35. So that was pretty impressive um, for a school our size to have two runners that, that really competed that hard and that well. Um, volleyball won sectional. Um, that was pretty fantastic. You know, it's it's nice to have a little bit of success right when you walk in the door, and and I was lucky enough to be a, you know, to have that available because you know I didn't do anything I, I like my thing is I, I don't do anything I just make sure they're in the right place at the right time you know that's that's my thing the, the hard work and the effort the energy the time they put in um, the coaches uh, the staffs the players and you know kind of the unsung heroes are the families and the coaches and the families the players because uh, they're falling around they're letting them be away from their own families uh, to spend time with them um, so and I know I'm gonna forget some things um, in the winter girls basketball won sectional and shared the conference title. Boys basketball won sectional, getting ready to play in the regional. Um, we had uh, two swimmers qualify for state down at IUPUI this winter. Um, and who were they? Uh, McKenna Beal and Mason Beal. So Mason was a senior this year and qualified, and McKenna was a sophomore and she qualified this year. So, so we can kind of say it's a Beal affair? I think it's a Beal affair. <laughs> okay. Yep. And so, you know, just a lot of good things going on. Like I said, I'm probably forgetting a lot Bowling of stuff. Bowling team? Bowling team, yeah. Um, I'm not as necessarily involved with that since it's not a high school sport. sport. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, especially the girls, I think, went pretty far this year, maybe semi state. Um, and so, like I said, it's. Uh, it's a blessing to be in the Rochester community. It's a blessing to be part of the Rochester community schools, and a blessing to be part of the Rochester athletic department. So, a lot of good things happening, uh, and you know, some of those things you can see if you uh, drive by the school. And uh, there's a lot of projects we're working on, and projects that you know I always have plans in the future that I'd like to get done. But uh, it's all coming into into place. Now, can we give you credit for the new weightlifting uh, facility? You cannot. Okay. I walked into that one. The baseball press box and the uh, new weight room um, was already in progress. I kind of stepped in and got involved late in the process. and you know. But I'll tell you what, I was just showing a contractor yesterday. Um, I've been in a lot of weight facilities, just in my experiences. Um, coached at Ben Davis, coached at North Central, coached at Noblesville. Um, and, you know, for a 2A school, our weight facility is just spectacular. I, I don't know if there's another one as nice as ours for a school our size in the state. And, you know, we have three strength and conditioning courses throughout the course of the day. Um, we're really getting ready to hit uh, the summer uh, strength and conditioning period hard. Um, and just excited to see what that facility can bring, you know, for – our athletic teams and you know just uh, something that allows us to be able to compete on a higher level. Well our guest this morning is Ryan Johnson who's the athletic director of the Rochester School Community School System. Uh, you mentioned baseball, baseball diving. What I see some construction going on there. What's happening? Yeah so uh, so the baseball press box has been under construction I think you know for almost Eight months. nine months yeah. probably, months. Um, and it's it's coming to fruition. It's almost done. Um, a lot of what's left is just minor details. Um, we're gonna oversee it again, make sure we get the grass behind home plate really ready to play. Um, come our first home game on April 11th. Um, we got a lot of grass and dirt work outside of the actual uh, press box, outside of the playing surface that needs to get done. Um, we have uh, Blake Marchand from Mar Marchand Athletic Field Services coming up to work on our baseball and softball diamonds, and uh, he's going to be taking care of our football field also. Um, so a lot of good things happening over there. 
Um, today, I think uh, LG Concrete is going to be pouring our uh, slab base for our new uh, batting cage that we're getting installed right there at the baseball diamond. So a, lo a lot of good things happening. Um, it's it's fun to be a part of right now. Okay, let's uh, let's go to the game that's tomorrow. Uh, lots of changes, and before we went on the air, you were talking about some of the uh, the allocations that have to be made and uh, mm -hmm. how that how how did that happen? And tell us a little of the details, Ryan. Yeah. So yesterday morning, you know, I think the whole state was notified that the ISA was going to be holding a press conference yeah. at noon, um, and. There's rumors and rumblings before that, but never any, you know, I never got any concrete information. So um, I had some assumptions and my assumptions came true. Um, uh, Commissioner Bobby Cox, you know, basically said that we're going to play the rest of this tournament out without any fans um, to speak of. The rest of the tournament, just, he's talking about the regionals? Regional, semi state, and state. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So All the, the way out. Yep, till, to, till the conclusion. It's, um, it's kind of going against the grain of the state of Indiana. It is, but you know what? It's it's one of those things that, at the heart of education, at the heart of education centered athletics, it's the safety of our, our our kids. It's the safety of our families, and so we want to make sure that we're not putting our kids and their families at risk for any type of health concern. And with everything going around, and you know, it's just crazy. You know what can happen in the period of 48 to 72 hours if you look at it you know yeah. from you know wednesday at 8 a.m till friday at 8 a.m it's like the world flipped over on itself um with all the different cancellations postponements things of that nature and so yeah it it, it really is you know disappointing for our fans um because they won't be able to go down there and, and watch the game and i think it'll be a really good game i think it's gonna be an exciting game and basically you know your two avenues are going to be WROI, um, RTC Channel 4 is going to be broadcasting the IFSA. They, the IFSA took over the broadcast, so they'll be broadcasting that feed on RTC. So RTC is picking up the feed from IHSA. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. So the, and, you know, in talking so, to some... So people, tomorrow at 1230, I can get it on my television. Absolutely, absolutely. Yep. And those of you who don't have RTC, I think uh, IFSATV.org. Is another place you'll be able to stream it. And I think you can go to rtctv4.com, uh, I believe. They'll have okay. it on, online for free, too. Okay, great. Yeah. So if you know. don't have uh, RTC uh, cable, you can cable. still watch it on their okay. website. All right, give that again, because there's, there's some grandparents out there that would like to watch it. Yeah, that website's rtctv4.com. Okay, uh, now I know that the attendance is limited tomorrow. Yeah. How, how did you determine who gets the ticket? So, is it the highest, the highest bidder? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. No, uh, it's not the highest bidder. Okay. Um, so basically, what it, what it came down to is the IFSA determined that there will only be seventy five attendees for each team, plus the twelve rostered players. So that's a total of eighty seven people, and that that number, that seventy five, includes immediate family members. It includes. Um, coaches, coaches' wives. It includes statisticians, bookkeepers. It includes um, administrators, essential personnel. Um, and basically, what's going to happen is I'm responsible for checking in our 74 fans since I'll be one of them. So I'm on that list. So you know, I'll get that information out to parents, what door to enter, all that jazz um, later later today. But it's going to be one of those things where you're going to walk in a specific door. I'm going to check you off a list. And we're going to go. Um, the one thing that did come late last night or later in the evening yesterday was um, we are going to push the start time back to 1230 um, with Governor Holcomb coming out and saying non-essential um, gatherings should not consist of more than 250 people. Um, basically, Lapel's going to play the first game. So Wapahani and Ross will play. They'll clear out the gym, clean for about 10 minutes, and then they'll start the clock for the second game, and that's when we'll be able to bring in our fans. So... Um, for those family members that are going to be traveling down to uh, Lapel tomorrow, you know, really there's no reason to get to the school before 12:15. You know, I know on Wednesday we talked about how you need to get down early. You'll be able to watch both games. That is now not the case. It, okay. it will not be happening in that way. Like I said, in, in the in the period of 48 to 72 hours, yeah. the world got flipped on top of its head. So, it's 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 some adjustments. And the word you use, flexible, is, is something we all have to be right now. And you know, we're hoping the boys, you know, are able to go down there and compete and. and Bring home a W. 
Okay, Tanner, uh, Blackford's playing tomorrow. Mm -hmm. They have a, a little above-average player there. Yeah, Luke. All Burton. right, t tell the people out there about this just gentleman. Sure, they have a junior six-foot guard, Luke Brown. He averages a little more than 30 points per game. Uh, he's getting looked at by a lot of schools, but has offers from Ball State, Indiana State, Kent State, Lehigh, and Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and maybe a few others. So, uh, yeah, I mean, anytime you average 30 points or more per game, that's you're a pretty good scorer. So. Yeah, and before he came there, do you recall what their record was? They hadn't won but a game or two in the last two yeah, years. I know you had told me it was a really bad record. Yeah, and their, their head coach is Jerry Hoover. Jerry Hoover and I played against each other, so you know how old he is. He's been around for a while. <laughs> He's been around. He played at Monticello, went on to Purdue, and uh, played there six foot at that time six foot seven, six foot eight, which was was really really tall, really, yeah. really big. So, yeah. and uh, Jerry and his son uh, coached that team. Pretty cool little connection there. That's right. Thank you for stopping by this morning, uh, Ryan, and good luck at. And congratulations, you've really done a good job. You got these teams winning, and it's all your. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, I appreciate you having me on. It's always nice to be able to chat with you guys and then talk about Rochester Athletics and Rochester Community School Corporation. So we appreciate the opportunity. Well, we like uh, Rochester Athletics. I know you do, and we appreciate that too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, trivia this morning. Besides Alaska, what other state has never had a school represented in the NCAA tournament? Is it Delaware, New Hampshire? C main. What C? Oh, I, I, I accidentally put two C's down there. It should just be uh, category C okay. in Maine. As a All right, Maine. I, I thought that was a new state. Oh, well. Okay. Any guesses, Paul? Uh, I'm going to go Maine. You're correct. You're right. Can't fool the, you. The two C's yeah. is what I'm going to get. You know what? He okay. really pushed that yeah. C factor, that so I'm just going to try it. It's not. Okay. okay, let's close with this uh, words of wisdom from Pearl Bailey. Uh, Pearl Bailey was an actress and a, uh, a singer and uh, very, very popular. Uh, and she says, no one can figure out your worth but you. Pearl Bailey. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Dick. And we look forward Everybody to have a great weekend. Stay healthy. We'll see you next week. I will.